Hi, I'm Kevin. This is Rusty. We're with Springfield Leather. Uh, we've been asked to do some little tutorial type videos on uh, different methods of staining or dyeing a piece of leather. So we've decided to attempt one. For what it's worth, we're in store hours. If you hear the phone or if you hear somebody be paged or you see a customer wandering around, don't worry, no charge for that. Rusty, what would you say one of the most difficult colors to be successful with in, in staining a piece of leather is? Black. And you can have all kinds of issues with black. It's, black is, is tough. But it doesn't have to be. So we've decided to pick that color and show you a few things. First of all, these are some little sample pieces of leather that we have dyed black. If you look at them carefully, you'll see a difference in some of them. This one isn't quite so nice. This one is a lot less nice. These samples were dyed about five days ago. This one has faded and is going to continue to fade more and more. Now, usually, many, many t people, if they're going to dye a piece of leather for the first time, they'll get their leather out, get their bottle of dye, which we have here, <laughs> open it up. There is a trick here to be learned. I'm going to hopefully communicate that. When you take a dauber, you stick it into a bottle of dye, make sure that that dauber will fit easily down in there. If it does not, you pull it out and those little fibers will scrape against the edge of the bottle of the dye and they kind of act like a spring and they'll give you little bitty speckles all around. That's not happy, especially when it's on your shirt because they don't come out. Okay, I've dipped my happy little dauber in my happy little dye. I'm going to take that put it on this piece of leather and I'm kind of going to go in circles. My wife says I do this a lot. The one thing about this that you want to keep in mind is that as soon as you touch the leather with this dauber full of dye, it starts sucking dye out of the dauber and of course the leather sucks it in there and right away you're putting less and less dye on the leather. Now when you do this, initially it looks great. If you are wise, you will have a place to put this, such as on that piece of leather. Now I'll tell you, if you leave that dauber on that piece of leather for any length of time, you know what's going to happen, Rusty? surprise me. It's going to go all the way through the leather and you're going to see it on the front side and quite possibly on your table. One of the things that people don't realize, even if you have a little bit of dye on this dauber and you leave it there overnight, it's quite possible that you're going to have a ring of dye on the front side of that leather when it's all done. The other thing too is, is that the USMC black that he's using is an alcohol based dye. The longer the lid stays off of it or the older the dye is, the more evaporation you get, the less liquid is inside of that and it becomes more thick and a little bit less easy to get a good even coat on. Yeah, and that's really important too because with the exception of black, almost every time you use Phoebing's alcohol based dye, you should reduce it with dye reducer or denatured alcohol before you use it. I know that sounds contrary to nature, but it's not. You need to reduce the dye. Something that happens when you do reduce black dye, though, is, is that you get what looks like a pretty decent coat on the top, but when the leather bends and begins to open up, it, it's actually very gray because the separation of the grain fibers, it's not absorbed into there, so it starts to show this fleshy color through quite a bit. So the more you reduce black dye, 
the more of that'll show, or you'll find out that your penetration wasn't very good because the alcohol acts as a vehicle for the dye pigment. You've got dye pigment in the bottle, then you have alcohol, or in, in an oil-based dye, you have oil. It's really just a vehicle. The further that vehicle goes down inside of the grains of the leather, the further it takes that dye pigment. So with an alcohol, as it evaporates off, it leaves that dye pigment on the top of it. So when you have more alcohol and less pigment, the alcohol goes in, but there's less pigment to actually give you good color coverage over top of the leather. That's good. And now, I don't know how well you can see this, but you remember I dyed half of the leather, renewed the dye on my dauber, came back and dyed the other half. There's a line right down the middle. Why is that? Well, it's because everything is different now, according to all that Rusty just said. As this sits, you're going to see this is, this is going to lighten up considerably. Now, we're not going to leave it sit here and, and run our camera during all that time, but you may be able to see that line down the center. I'm, I'm not really sure if you can or not yet, but uh, it's there. Normally, you would always give something like this two coats. Once you've done that, and I'm just going to cap up my bottle of dye because I am scared to death of open bottles of dye. Once you've given your, your project a couple of coats and you've let it sit for a while, you need to take a clean cloth and wipe the excess off. Something that people don't realize a lot of times is, is that that dye pigment, a lot of it's laying on top of the surface of the leather. And if you take a finish of any sort, but a lot of times an acrylic finish, you'll be applying it with a sponge or some sort of a dauber. That pigment will be picked up in the finish and it'll become suspended. And some of it will actually be on the top of it. And so a person will dye it and they say, well, I finished it, but it just keeps rubbing off and it keeps rubbing off. That's because that excess dye pigment didn't get picked up off of it and it came to the surface inside of the finish. So if you'll wipe that off a lot and, and get it buffed out nice like that, you'll get a lot of that picked up and you won't have to deal with that. And you can see that it kind of helps even things up a bit. This really looks good, but it's not because this color is going to fade without fail. Sooner or later, it's going to fade. You put it out in the sun or whatever, and it's going to fade. Now, many of the, you know this already because you've had problems with it. The happiest way to take care of this right now, as far as I'm concerned, is use a spray finish, and you can be done. Good. That's easy. You don't have to rub and mess and fool around. But a spray finish isn't going to guarantee you that that color stays fast. It can still fade. A really happy answer to making black black, well, there's two things. Acrylic, black acrylic resoline, which works very well. Leather balm that's black, which works really well. Those two finishes just basically solve your problems, don't you think, Rusty? I absolutely do because, you know, you hear people talk and they say, well, I remember back when you had to dye it blue and then you could dye it black to get a good coat and a good color. Well, if you've got a decent coat on there of leather, once you put that black finish on top of it, it's really going to make it look nice. It's going to even it out. And actually what will happen too is, is the moisture in the water doesn't evaporate as fast, so it helps to drive those pigments deeper into the leather, which helps you get a better coat and a better coverage. Hopefully, you can see the difference. Brand new dye job, old dye job. This is what happens. Now, we'll take and finish part of this strip so that you can see the end result. We'll do it in a little bit different way than normal, okay? We're gonna take a little bit of Big Four leather conditioner And I'm going to put it in this happy little plastic bucket here. I don't have very much just because I'm, I don't want to waste it. This is a very exact science, as you can tell, too, with your bucket. Yeah, if you don't get everything perfect here, nothing works. I have got a little bit of black dye in this dauber, just a little. Now, if I was doing this professionally, I would probably take an eyedropper and I would put about three drops of this dye 
in this big four. We just brought it all to you. Something that works too nice, Kevin, is a syringe uh, without a needle, just a cheap 50 cent syringe. You saw how I just dipped this dauber into this uh, conditioner, and now I have a nice little addition of black dye to it. I'm going to stir it up. It really doesn't take much dye to go a long ways when you're adding it to something like a conditioner like this too. No, it does not. And I did not put very much in here at all, as you can tell. Now, there's no rules here. You can put as much dye as you want into this finish. But there are consequences to everything. If you put too much in here and then you apply it to the leather, you could get a splotch. Now, that really doesn't matter much on black because it's black. But if you put too little in here, you can always add more. It becomes very hard for the dye to break down into the into the conditioner after a period of time and what happens is is if you don't whisk it in really well you end up with little bitty speckles of color pigment throughout it and especially like what Kevin was saying is if you were using that on something and, and it wasn't going to be a real dark well that splotch is going to be dark and it won't just be a little dot it'll be a little small streak whenever it hits it. Now we've made it quite a bit darker I'm going to take and put just a little bit yeah, daubers are free right? of our colored leather conditioner here. Doing what Kevin's doing right now, actually you'll find out as we go through these videos hopefully that there's a lot of applications that this can be used in that could really make you look impressive to the wife or the husband. One or the other. customer who's paying you to do this. You can probably tell that made quite an improvement in, in the appearance of the dye job. Now, this is black. Not, just in case you didn't just see. Keep black. them straight. You remember the happy little dauber that I took? There's just a lot of tips and hints that you can accumulate. I'm gonna just apply the dauber that had a lot of dye in it already, but now it's got a little bit of Big Four in it also. You can probably tell that that is really darkening it up, but it's staying wet for a longer period of time. And if you remember what Rusty said about the solvent base of the dye carrying the pigment into the leather, well, the Big Four is much the same. It gradually sucks in. Leather likes Big Four, or any other conditioner for that matter, and it'll pull it more evenly into the leather. Oops. Something that's neat too about it is is that uh, it, if, you're, if you were using just a dye and a Big Four and you had come up with something color-wise that you like, it's kind of weird because if you, take, if you took just dye and on a dauber, and you hit that piece of leather, it's gonna be black right there in that one spot, and then it's gonna lighten out as Kevin showed you before. But Big Four or a conditioner like that, it does a weird thing. It gives you just a split second extra time to where you can blend that in and smooth it out a little bit nicer. Yeah, you see, first of all, when we wiped off the excess, this is what we got right here. Lots of stuff. Then we wiped off the excess again, and we wiped it off again, far less. So now we've got this conditioner mix. And look at the amazing black that you get. It really is well done when compared to this part over here. Remember that there's no wrong way to do this. The only way it becomes wrong is if you're not happy with the outcome and you can't seem to fix it. That's it. Now, just as a, a, a finish to this little bitty presentation, you can take any uh, alcohol-based dye and mix it with Bix4 or Lexol and you can come up with a color that will actually restore color to many types of furniture not all types but many types you can recolor boots and shoes at least some of them if the leather is the right type and uh, this is kind of a miracle worker stuff to some degree remember though that you can always add more color 
it's not something you're going to be happy with when you try taking color back out. So always add less color than you think and build your color up. The leather's going to love you for the conditioner either way. We've taken various mixtures of this and uh, come up with a color that we like, put it on natural leather. You can use it as an antiquing. Howsomever, remember, if you get too much dye in with the Big Four, you reach a point where that mixture will splotch the leather when you put it on natural leather. As to the acrylic resiline and the leather balm with atom wax that is already black, both these finishes are already black, if you wish to use these, it's simply a matter of a damp sponge. You wipe it on the leather. Resiline is acrylic. You have to keep that in mind. Humidity can affect it. Uh, it needs to dry and set thoroughly. How long would it need to dry, Kevin? It really depends on the day. And, and if your shop is inside or in the garage or if it's subject, it just depends on the humidity. There's really no rules there, Rusty. What would you say? Uh, for some things an hour, for some things overnight. Possibly. You know, you can speed things up a little bit. And, and I talk to people a lot of times about using an electric hair dryer. There's a few things that you want to remember with that though, especially on an acrylic. What you've done is you've cooked the top of it, but you haven't cured it. It isn't, it isn't thoroughly cured out all the way through. And so you may put your finger on it and press on it and you'll end up with an impression in it. And it can leave that area can be feeling like it's sticky. It's really not cured. You've got it warmed up, but you really haven't cured it out all the way through. And the other thing is, is electric heat really draws moisture out of leather. And so you want to be careful of that. Yeah, and by the way, you can buff you can buff anything. Gives it a nice happy little shine. Uh, this this leather balm that's black is really one of my favorite finishes. Uh, the reason for that is earlier in my life, my leather life, we made a lot of black dress belts. It's hard to make a black dress belt if uh, you don't start with black leather. And we didn't have any black leather, so we had to dye it and that meant you're always fighting that uneven shade of black that you end up with. The black leather balm will fix that. Again, a damp sponge and light coats. Now, there's one thing you have to be careful of with leather balm. It's a wax. Rusty, you know what that is? Well, I'm not sure if we're thinking on the same page, but one, you want to make sure that you get nice, even coats and be, be straight with your lines because if you've ever painted something with a paintbrush, it leaves streaks in it and it leaves marks in it. The other thing is, is that if you're going to use it, I usually will just turn it over a few times. Don't yeah. shake it up. Don't shake it. You just Bad turn idea. it over a few times and that allows that pigment and stuff to just move around inside of there. When you shake that up, you create a lot of air bubbles. And those air bubbles, if you don't fix them or keep them smooth on the leather, they're going to be there just like those streaks are when it dries out. Yeah, that's a fact. Now what happens is when you get these air bubbles on there, if you don't carefully wipe those away with your damp sponge, those bubbles will pop. And you're going to have a ring with a little buildup around it. Have a little bit of craters. Yep. So, uh, again, there's no rules. There's plenty of ways to do things. Uh, and if you ever have questions, Feel free and call and ask for uh, Rusty. 